your church grows or changes, um, change is inevitable. And in the first year of the church, I had everybody in the church in my home. Um, I, I like having people over. I'm not saying you, you should do that. I'm just saying I like having people over. And in the first year, I had everybody in our little church plant over for dinner. And, um, and I did an open house for probably the first four years of the church where everybody in the church was invited to our house at Christmas. And, um, and I did the baking, and, and I loved it, and it was my way of giving back. And, and as the church grew, I quickly realized, you know, when it got to about 800, they couldn't fit in my little 1,400 square foot house, even if the house was open for six hours. They weren't all going to fit anymore, and I couldn't do it anymore. And I used to know everybody's name, and I used to know their dog, and I used to know their dog's bunion, and when they were, you know, I knew, I knew everything about everybody. And when now when people walk up to me sometimes on the patio and I'll they introduce themselves, I've always wanted to meet you. I go, really, how long have you been coming? It's like a knife in my heart. Wait, if somebody says, oh, we've been coming for 10 years. I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. You've been coming for 10 years and I've never met you? And um, really, I, I never get, that hurts me every time. I mean, I could cry right now if I love myself. I'm, I could just sob about that. It makes me so sad. Because um, I'm very relational, and I love being having those relationships with people. I simply can't maintain it. When people come up to me, and they used to say, "Hey, could you guys come over for dinner?" Yeah, we could. We could. And now sometimes when people come up to me and say, "Could you guys come for dinner?" Most of the time, I have to look at them and say, "I'm so sorry. I would not have to." We just simply are unable to keep up with that level of request, and I'm so sorry. And sometimes people understand, and sometimes they don't. And when I know I've broken their heart, it just kills me. I'm not a pleader or anything. Um, um, but I just, it took me a while to realize that those were griefs, that, that those were losses, that as the church grew, I lost my ability to touch people on an individual basis. I lost my ability to do that because it was impossible to keep up with. And um, so I don't feel guilty. I realize it's okay to grieve that. It's okay to feel sad about that. Growth is a two-edged sword. Growth in a church is fantastic because it means people are coming to know Christ. It means that people are growing in their own faith. That is fantastic. I love it that our church is growing. And I hate it at the same time because it costs. It costs. It's a cost. And it's cost us personally, and it will probably always cost me because of my personality. Um, but what I do is I allow myself, just in this general principle, on something like that. Like when somebody tells me they've been coming for 10 years, and I get that instant stab in the heart where I feel that grief of, ugh, I can't keep up with people anymore. It's over within two seconds. I, I recognize it, I, I mourn it in those moments, and I recognize it as a loss, and I go on. The stuff when it's more down in this last year where I've had to give up a significant areas of ministry, stuff that I've loved. I, as an HIV advocate, for eight years I've traveled the world advocating for people with HIV and for orphans. I've traveled the world, and I've traveled the United States, and I've had to severely in, uh, limit that. And um, this year when I looked ahead to January, I looked at January 1, and I, in the past eight years, my calendar pages are just full. I mean, there's this appointment, there's this trip, there's this speaking engagement, there's this, there's this. It's been very, very full, and I've gotten used to that. And I looked ahead to 2011 and saw there were an awful lot of blank pages, a lot of white spaces on my calendar. And my first reaction, in all honesty, was deep insecurity. Um, I don't know how to do that. What I, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't have that significant of a ministry anymore. Then the second feeling was um, fear of, oh my goodness, maybe God knows there's bad stuff coming down the pike and he's cleared out the pathway so that I'm around and, and, I'm, you know, and I'll be here in case more bad stuff happens. So insecurity, then fear. And then honestly, on, on New Year's Eve, as I was just thinking about the new year and looking at those blank pages, I had a sense of excitement. Because instead of those blank pages being something to be fearful of or something to feel inadequate about, I, I asked God to give me a different way of looking at that, and he did. And now I look at that and just go, God, you have something ahead for me in 2011 that I can't structure. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's ahead, but maybe those blank spaces are actually days of creativity 
and new ways of serving you that I've never done before, and I'll be doing it in a different way. And how good you are to give me those blank spaces on the calendar. Um, so, so much of so much of what we do and what we go through and what we experience, I know you probably heard it from the other gals, and if you had the opportunity to say it, it's so much is your perspective. So much of our ability to survive and thrive. Because guys, I'm not just interested in surviving, although there are some days I would be happy just to survive. But I'm looking at that higher goal of not just surviving, but thriving in whatever's going on in my life. And, and the difference between those who <laughs> don't survive, just survive, and those who thrive, really I don't think has that much to do with what actual circumstances or what life comes in. But it's what truly what you do, how you frame it, the way that you approach it, um, what happens on the inside with you and God as you talk about it. That is what makes the difference between those who don't, those who barely, and those who thrive. I want to be somebody who thrives. I, I've, done, I've done enough of the barely survive, and sometimes the circumstances have been enough to where it felt like that was all I was going to do on a day. And that's okay. You know what? Some days to survive, you've done well. <laughs> you've done well to survive that particular day. And to then know with a perspective that God is in control, that he's working in your life, he's going to be with you no matter what. You can get to those places where those blank pages or whatever are not frightening, but or, or causes for grief. I spent a lot of last year grieving when I feel like, felt like I was losing. And um, and I'm, I'm, I'm past that. I'm at the place, the situations haven't really changed in some ways they've gotten worse. So it's not that everything's gotten better. But I, the way I look at it, has changed. And I think that that's probably key. 